I'm very proud to say that my grandfather started his practice on the corner of 16th and Franklin for several years. He eventually moved um, when my father was still in high school to South Carolina. After my father did his medical training, he returned to St. Louis to get his medical training at Homer G. Phillips Hospital. At that point in time, he set up his practice after becoming medical director for the outpatient clinic there. Initially, he set up a private practice at the corner of St. Louis and Marcus. And I remember going to the practice on several times and sitting there. He actually had a, um, an aquarium in the waiting room. I would sit there and watch the fish. Uh, he moved to practice in the 1965 to um, the current location on Union near Natural Bridge. And I had the fortune of joining him in 1982 and we practiced together at that site until he retired in 2001. It was very, very rewarding when I had um, family members of patients who then also became patients of mine. And so that was very rewarding. And I was really looking forward to that each day to get up to uh, initiate those relationships and continue on with those relationships. Now I tell you though, when I opened that door and we were hit with calls from the insurance company, calls from the emergency room, calls from the uh, pharmacies. Um, when it was hit with uh, all the paperwork that was involved, that was not a lot of fun. But the one-on-one uh, -on -one interaction, the relationship that developed over so many years, uh, meeting family members, that really motivated me to get up each day and go back to the practice. One thing that I was particularly proud of of my office staff is that we looked around and a lot of the women that we had were not getting uh, mammograms in a timely manner and my staff was calling to try and get them to schedule those mammograms. Well, it was too inconvenient, they couldn't afford the parking, they couldn't afford the trips, take the time off from work. So my staff came up with the idea of working with Barnes Hospital and bringing the mobile van actually to the practice. And so now that van comes three times a year and there are anywhere from 60 to 80 women who now are getting mammograms who would not have gotten mammograms before. You know, I don't think that's gonna work this time, but we'll try it again next time. So. To practice internal medicine, that really is a hands-on, to do a very good job, you have to touch the patient. And so uh, to do that one-on-one -on -one in the examination room was a very important part of what I thought was the practice of medicine. When the COVID and the pandemic hit, it became obvious that the patients could not come into the office, and so you had to double down and, and try and figure out a better ways to touch the patients without actually having them in the office. So it became quite obvious that a lot of our patients did not have access to computers, did not have access to smartphones and internet and so forth. So. Uh, sometimes it's just reaching out with a telephone call just to make sure that they had their medications, just to make sure that they um, were paying attention to their weights and so forth. So that was not the best possible solution, but that was the best we could do at that particular point in time. Uh, during that time, I also had the advantage of um, hiring two new physicians to join me in practice, Dr. Anita Hill-Jones and Dr. Larry Buck. And so I wanted to make sure that they were able to come in, meet the patients, and I felt comfortable with them being able to take over the practice. This is actually an award that I'm holding in my hand from the St. Louis American Foundation when I was listed as 10 of the most prominent African American physicians. This is back in 2002. So the circle has completely come around. I am most humbled to accept this award from the St. Louis American Foundation on behalf of my grandfather, Dr. William R. Williams, my father, Dr. Jerome Williams Sr., my brother, Dr. Wendell Williams, and then of course, my daughter, Dr. Christina Williams, who is carrying on the tradition. Over the years, I've had the wonderful experience of working with a great staff who has allowed me to take care of the healthcare needs of so many people for so many years, and I want to thank them and acknowledge them tonight also.
Over the last several months, as I've talked with some of my patients about retirement, it has been especially noteworthy to me that I've had the opportunity to tell them how humbled I am and how I acknowledge their ability and their willingness to take me on as their physician, and I, do not take, I did not take that responsibility lightly at all. In addition, I have the wonderful support of my lovely wife, Marva, um, family, friends, and that has also kept me on this path for so many years.